Frederick W. Wrigley was born and raised in Owasso, Michigan. But as a young man, before he had graduated from high school, he and his mother went to Sarasota, Florida, to the Ringling School of Art, where he studied for two years. And he majored in sculpture, but he also studied with other private instructors there. There he met Adolf Schultz, who was a member of the Brown County Art Gallery. And Adolf uh, wanted him to come to Brown County. So he and his mother came to Brown County and he fell in love with this place. So after going to the Ringling School of Art, he went to the Art Students League in New York City. And there he came back to Owasso, met my mother, and the two of them went to Gloucester, Massachusetts, which is also an art colony like Brown County. My father's philosophy, and he says, my preference is to paint in such a way that the viewer senses that the artist, through the use of color, composition, and tonal values, have produced a painting with feeling. It is my desire that my paintings come closer to a dream or a thought rather than a photographic reproduction. It's whenever possible, I like to paint on location, working directly from nature is how I get my greatest inspiration. He was a plein air painter. He went out and painted outside. He didn't just go take a picture come inside and paint. He painted on site and he painted in oil and sometimes in acrylic and watercolor. In 1954, several members of the Brown County Art Gallery started the Brown County Art Guild and he was a part of that group of people, so he was a founder, founding member of the Brown County Art Guild. When they first got the building, the minor house, the founding members, they did the painting, the trim, the cleaning of the floors. I mean, they, they did everything until later years after Marie Goff gave money to the guild. He was extremely passionate about the Brown County Art Guild because he was a part of its beginnings. He worked there, he did his artwork for the guild, mostly. Um, he loved when Marie Goth gave money to the guild because it made it easier to show paintings. When the guild was established, it was established for the artist. Uh, he was very, my father was very close with the other artist. Uh, they even, there were people that would invite all the artists for like a pancake breakfast and everything. And I remember going to many of these artists' homes, but we would go to each other's houses all the time. And then my father also was a teacher teacher of art and it was not the easiest life but he had to support two girls you know and it's hard to sell enough paintings to support a family so he also taught art numerous places you can find paintings in public different places uh, Indiana National Bank, Indianapolis Public Schools, University of Delaware, National Bank of Easton, uh, Indiana University. They come up for auction or different galleries occasionally have his paintings. Like that prize-winning painting uh, gallery 
got it and called me and said, hey, this is a first prize winner of the Hoosier Salon. Do you want to buy it? And I go, yeah, I think I do, because it was a, first, you know, a prize winner. We don't have, my sister and I do not have his best work. We have some of his best work, but they were sold, you know, and occasionally they come up for auction and occasionally galleries have them for sale. Okay, the artists that are currently exhibiting are the finest in the area, maybe in the state of Indiana. Uh, you can see their work and also some historic art at the Brown County Art Guild in now, downtown Nashville. You also can go online and see paintings in the history of the Brown County Art Guild.